Hello my viewers! Welcome to my series on Hexmanic Advanced Guest Tutorials. These videos are going to differ from the main playlist of tutorials because I'm covering more miscellaneous aspects of Hexmanic Advanced that you ROM hackers can make use of if you want to, but aren't exactly obligatory. As such, this is guest tutorial number one, editing go-to shortcuts. Personalizing your ROM's quote-unquote homepage involves editing the icons, finding sprites for those icons, and creating new buttons so that you can access other tables more easily. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and let's go to work! So by default, when you open a ROM for the first time in Hexmanic Advance, you'll get five subdirectories, which I won't really be focusing on in this tutorial, and five big buttons at the top. Pokemon, Trainers, Moves, Items, and Maps. Depending on what ROM you're editing, the icons are going to look different. If you're editing a ROM hack, or a ROM that has severely corrupted data, then some icons might not show up properly. Since Pokemon Ruby doesn't exactly have item sprites, its go-to menu looks a lot different than what you see for Fire Red and Emerald. Apart from the images themselves, everything that you see here is handled in your TomL file the metadata that's associated with your ROM that keeps track of all of the formatting Hexmanic Advance does to your ROM to make it easier to understand. Let's start changing the graphics of these buttons. So here's the folder where I have a Pokemon Emerald ROM in, and it also has the Tom L file of the same name as the GBA file. So I'm going to open it in Notepad, and what I'm going to do is hold Ctrl and press F to open the Find menu, and type go to shortcut without any spaces. Here's the metadata that corresponds to the five go to buttons. Each of them has a name for its caption, the location of the image in the ROM, and a destination table that's also within the ROM that the button serves to take you to upon clicking it. So the first thing I'm going to edit is the image that corresponds to the trainers button. And I'm going to highlight the location of the sprite what we're going to do is go back to the ROM in Hexmanic Advance and use the Go To menu to access the table for the trainer sprites, not the trainer data itself. So that's why we're not clicking the trainers button. So this cool trainer has a sprite ID of 3, which corresponds to the metadata we looked at earlier. And you can see the ID of the sprite you're clicking on within this table in two locations. Now I want to pick a new sprite, and I'll do this by hovering over all of the sprite pointers in this table until I find one I want. I have a different tutorial on trainer editing, and it also covers editing trainer sprites, which I'll have in a card on the top right of your screen. For this tutorial, I ended up picking Norman, and his trainer sprite ID is 44, as you see right here. Now I'm going to return to the TomL file, and go back to the metadata that corresponds with the trainers button. In the image path, I replace the number 3 with the number 44. Upon reloading the ROM, you'll see that the trainers button now has Norman Sprite. I'm going to show you another example, and this one will involve editing the maps shortcut. So by default, the maps shortcut has data for Little Root Town in Pokemon Emerald. In Fire Red and Leaf Green, this would be Pallet Town. This particular Little Root Town map is map bank 0, map number 9, as indicated right here. I could change the icon to reference a different map, and I could also change the destination so that clicking the map shortcut takes you to a different map. I type in my map name of choice, and I click the maps subdirectory, and there are a lot of options to pick from. I chose map bank 26, map number 27, which you'll see corresponds to one of the battle pyramid maps. Here's what the map looks like in Hexmanic Advance. I have no need to edit this map, so I'll just go back to the Tom L file. So if I want to change the image component of this button, I have to change the location of the particular block map to use. So what I do is highlight the map bank, which is 0 in this case, and I type 26, which is the map bank of the Battle Frontier map. Next I change this 9, which corresponds to the 9 over here, to 27 for map number 27. I also fixed the typo that I just made earlier. I'm also going to change the destination, and here's how to do it. After the maps and period, I change the first number, which is the map bank, to 26. And after the dash, I change the second number to 27. 
I'll also have to change the corresponding name within the parentheses to Battle Frontier. And that's it, I'm just going to save changes now. Now you see that the map's go-to shortcut has the Battle Pyramid preview, which looks like a dumpster fire because of the necessary downscaling. And if I click the button, it takes me directly to that map instead of Little Root Town. If you find yourself editing a particular map often in your ROM hack, editing the map shortcut is really going to save you a lot of time in the long run. I will change one more icon. So the Pokemon button normally takes you to the stats table where you'll see the base stats, types, abilities, etc. But I'll change it so that it actually takes you to the table of Pokemon names instead. As you see right here. So now that you picked a new destination in the ROM, go ahead and copy the name of the table. Afterwards, we're going to close the ROM and reopen its TomL file. Going back to the metadata for the group of GoTo shortcuts, you will see the one that corresponds to the Pokemon button. To change the destination, I'm going to select the existing table name, which is data.pokemon.stats, and simply paste the new table over it. This slash 1 over there just simply means the particular element of the table. In the case of the Pokemon table, slash 1 means go to the second element of the table, which is Bulbasaur's entry. I can change this to slash 2 to reflect Ivysaur's entry, because Ivysaur's index number is 2. Now as I'm going back to the ROM, I'm going to click the Pokemon button again, and now it will take me to Ivysaur's entry of the names table instead of the stats table. Now I'm going to show you where to find these sprites in the ROM for your go-to shortcut icons. Basically, all you need to do is just go to the graphics subdirectory in your ROM in Xmandic Advance, and the image is going to be somewhere within this hierarchy of additional subdirectories. Hexmanic Advance does a great job categorizing these images. There are some images that Hexmanic Advance has picked up but didn't give a name yet, so you might need to manually give it a name in order to use those images in your go-to menu. If you manually displayed particular bytes as images, all of those images, palettes, and tile maps will be in this new subdirectory, like this one. So let's say you want to copy Pokemon Ruby and replace the potion that's in the items button with an overworld sprite. We will need to find the location of that particular sprite, and here's what we do. We click graphics, and then we click the subdirectory that closely resembles what we have. Sometimes we're just lucky, and we don't have to do any searching within the go to menu. The overall button is right there. Then I click sprites. For this demonstration, I'm going to click one of the Pokemon NPCs. So I follow its pointer, and then I follow the pointer that corresponds to the sprites field as you see on screen. So here's the location of the sprite itself. Unlike most other sprites in the game, we had to jump through so many hoops to get to this particular address. Thus, whenever Hexmanic Advance wants to do the same thing upon loading the GoTo menu, we have to specify something really complex in the image field. So I'm now going to edit this GoTo shortcut. Now, instead of this particular item sprite, I changed the name of the table to graphics.overworld.sprites. The sprite I chose has an index of 84, so I do slash 84 afterwards. And the rest of what I'm going to type is the syntax necessary in order to show the overworld sprite in the go to menu. This syntax simulates following a bunch of pointers from the overworld table to get to the particular image we want. For other images in the ROM, it's likely that you won't have to go into this much detail. Let's reopen the ROM and you'll see that the item shortcut has the new icon and it's loaded correctly. Let's try searching for another image. How about the substitute doll that can block statuses in battle? To search for this image, I'm going to type in the word substitute, and as you'll see, the number of subdirectories underneath graphics is filtered down to 3. The point here is to look through each filtered subdirectory and find the name that closely resembles the location of the image you want. Don't confuse sprites and tile maps with palettes and animation code. For this particular sprite, the location is within the Moves subdirectory. Click the location of the sprite. Actually, there are two sprites, a front one and a back one. 
Whichever one you pick would have its address go in the image field of the GoTo shortcut you want to edit. It's possible that the sprite you're looking for doesn't have its own name, but it's instead part of a table of sprites. For example, there is a table of all of the pictures that you see in battle when a Pokemon uses a move, such as Sword Stance or Bone Club. This is the table right here. For a table like this, what you can do inside a GoTo shortcut is specify the name of the table, then do a slash, and then the index of the sprite you're using. Top it off with a slash PTR, as that matches the PTR or pointer field of this table. If you try to do slash sprite like in other GoTo shortcuts, it will not show the image correctly. The image you would see on the GoTo menu would come from the address that the pointer in question is pointing to. The bottom line of the formats that correspond to the images, as you're starting out, try to replicate the formatting of existing GoTo shortcuts and exercise trial and error. Alright, I'll try to wrap up this video as soon as I can. This is the last objective of the tutorial, making new GoTo shortcuts. To do this, open your TomL file, and you can simply copy and paste existing GoTo shortcuts and changing the necessary parameters. I'm going to make one GoTo shortcut that references the substitute doll we made earlier. I set the image field to the location of one of the substitute dolls that we located earlier, and for the destination field, I picked a different address in the ROM that has a substitute doll. Now, for a more practical GoTo shortcut, one table that I access frequently in my ROM hack is the table of wild Pokemon. Each map's wild Pokemon data is stored in this table, and I can access it if I need to make edits on the fly, especially prior to the release of the beta map editor. As you saw, I followed the steps we discussed earlier. I have a few things to clarify. Silly me forgot to put PTR after the index of the substitute doll. I fixed that mistake off camera and the image will now load correctly. Also, in the other shortcut, I typed 41 for Zubat's index number. When I think of wild Pokemon, I think of Zubats in caves, so that's why I chose that index. After saving changes and reloading the ROM, as you see, there are two new go-to shortcuts with their images loaded properly. I can click on both of these buttons, and it will take me to the correct locations that I intended. Okay everyone, the tutorial on making go-to shortcuts is over. Now's your chance to spruce up your go-to menu so that it looks more unique than what you see in the vanilla ROMs. These shortcuts can make accessing obscure locations in your ROM a lot, lot more convenient. Do some experimenting yourself and have fun with this. That's all I got. Take care everyone!